My sister had this empty corner in her living room and asked if I could build her a tiny desk with some storage. She presented me this sketch with her idea, from which I made a 3D model. I also included a shallow drawer under the desk. I decided to finally use some of the lumber I brought from our family village many years ago. I got some of these walnut slabs into the studio a month and a half before starting the project, so they could acclimate to the room. These pieces have big holes, so I will assume a more rustic look than anything I've ever built before. I tried to make a composition for the tabletop that showed a lot of character, but still wouldn't have too large of a gap between the pieces. Yes, this is my first experiment on an epoxy table, but don't worry, my channel won't turn into another copycat channel with thousand dollar tables made from quote-unquote trash. This was just something I've wanted to try out. Also, this old wood isn't salvageable for anything else. All this dust and rot needed to be cleaned up. I initially tried some stiff nylon brushes, but they were just making tickles to the wood, so I swapped to a steel brush on the angle grinder. Oh, I almost forgot to recheck the humidity levels of the wood. It seemed pretty well acclimated since the moisture meter gave me numbers between 9 and 12 and the EMC of my studio had been around 10 or 11 in the latest weeks. So these are great to go. I kept cleaning all the dirty holes and knots with different steel brushes until there was no rot or debris in any part of the slab. There were also a few warm holes here and there that needed inspection. To flatten the slabs, I got the slab matrix from Solder Shop assembled over this MFT style top. This is a very robust routing flattening system that can be extended for very long slabs or kept shorter as I'm using it here. I don't have space in my studio to assemble this permanently, but I'm sure I will have it when I move to a bigger space. For now, it will be placed over my workbench during this project. I still need to fix the perforated top to the workbench, and for that I use Solder Shop's new quick lamps for MFTs, upside down and positioned outside the routing zone. My first thought was to clamp the slabs at once and flatten them, but since they were pre-warped in different directions, I realized I would waste too much depth to get them both completely flat, so I ended up flattening the first face separately. To 
to clamp the slabs with nothing interfering with the router bit, I used bench dogs and horizontal clamps that are securely fixed in the 20 mm holes with this knob. Okay, let's make some dust! They came out perfectly smooth, even though the rubber bit left these optical illusion marks. The central piece can fit perfectly on my small joiner, so there's no need to use the slab matrix for this one. With one flat face on each board, I could row the other faces at once. I placed a plastic sheet on top of them during the night to prevent additional warping and now I can cut the parts to a dimension closer to the final tabletop. I was waiting for some fresh track saw blades. All the ones I had were dull and I always forget to send them to be sharpened. He cut like butter with no burning marks. The old wood is mostly ready to receive the epoxy, so now it's time to make the mold. I know, an MDF mold? Really? Well, I wanted to try something different from the melamine that everyone seems to be using. This came to my mind when I was at the store and saw they didn't have the thickness of melamine that I wanted and the plastic roll section was right next to the lumber section, so I went there and chose one that had some rigidity. The idea here is to stick one layer of this plastic with double-sided tape to the MDF base and hopefully make it completely waterproof and easy to demold. Since I had never done this before, I thought that maybe I should do a small test first. I forgot to film this demolding, but the epoxy separated nicely from both the plastic and the packing tape on the sides. That's what I'm going for. Since I had to wait 48 hours to demold the test, I started working on the bookshelf. I cut all the pieces according to my 3D sketch. Back to the mold, I cut the plastic sheet to size and stuck it to the MDF with double-sided tape.
The sides of the mold were taped with regular packing tape, ensuring the bottom edge was also covered. I put it all together with construction adhesive. I'm afraid it might have been too strong for this application. We'll see how it goes when the molding time comes. I nailed and smeared the adhesive to prevent any leaks and this procedure was similar to what everyone does. The next day I could finally start the epoxy job. Since I will be using black epoxy to fill the spacings, I must first seal the walnut with clear epoxy. At this point I was pretty much following Black Tail Studios epoxy table workshop directions. It's not that Cam needs any more publicity or presentation, and you probably already know his channel, but his videos and virtual workshop are a valuable source of information for this kind of work. There were a few areas in the wood that seemed to be absorbing epoxy forever, so I had to mix three small batches over 12 hours to keep fitting this thirsty wood. I applied a thin coat of mold release to the mold before placing the walnut inside. I leveled the mold with old business cards as shims and started mixing the epoxy. I stirred it for 12 minutes non-stop to ensure it was thoroughly mixed and let it rest for 20 minutes. This way the bubbles had some time to disperse while in the bucket. After the pour, I was left with way too much mixed epoxy. I guess I was too worried about my calculations being wrong that I managed to make them wrong. At least the proportion of the components was correct. I salvaged this a few hours later, but I'm not covering that in this video. And this is where the tabletop ends for this episode, because I underestimated the time needed for this epoxy to cure fully and I'll cover the rest of the process in the next episode. For now, let's focus on finishing this bookshelf and desk structure. I edge banded all visible edges of the plywood using iron-on banding.
To finish the edge banding process, I need to glue these strips together that will make up the legs of the table. I started with one set of clamps, but wasn't convinced that they would create a perfectly flat glue up since this plywood is a bit bowed. In the end, I clamped everything to the work table. While that is drying, I can prep some veneer for those exposed edges. I don't have large edge bandings, so I grab the scrap of walnut veneer, which in this case is not relevant at all because it will be painted yellow, and cut it into oversized strips. I apply glue to the veneer and the plywood edges and let it dry. Once it wasn't sticky anymore, I placed them together and applied heat with the iron, which made them bond. To put the leg structure together, I used floating tenons because it was just quick and easy for me. The base of the tiny desk was put together with pocket holes, since it will all be hidden. The side piece where the drawer will be located is also going to be attached to the bookshelf, so I can just drive screws but join it from the side. Before starting the detail painting and the finishing, I just needed to cut the knockdown joinery for the shelves. To connect the bookshelf panels, I used the Kilver Binder system. It's probably the best system I've seen for knockdown shelves that is completely invisible once assembled. 
It consists of a groove with a specific dovetail profile that works with these plastic pieces that are screwed to the material. For my project, I will use the longer connectors to ensure the shelves are firmly attached. You can also find kits for this system at Souter Shop. I will leave the relevant links in the description. Oh, and by the way, they are running Christmas promotions on their website until the end of the year, so you still have a few days to grab some nice deals of their tools, including the slab matrix. I decided to give the legs a coat of white primer because the yellow paint is not entirely opaque. This way I quickly eliminate the darker walnut tones. I gave all the parts a light sanding and finished them with a hard wax oil that only required one coat. While the finish is drying, I can cut the drawer box sides with a table saw. I will be installing bloom under mount drawer slides, so there are a few specifications to meet. I have made several of these drawers in the past, you can watch my other videos in order to learn how to make these in detail. Okay, so now the final assembly of the desk structure. The legs will be positioned here and it fits, which is good. I can attach the right panel with screws and proceed to attach the legs.
I added another piece of plywood because the drawer slide needs a flat surface to attach to. These orange springs are what keep the drawer box connected to the slides. I can finally attach the back piece and call the desk complete for now. All that is left is to lay out all the black Kilver binder connectors, which was fairly easy to do. They just need to be centered where the edges of the shelves will go. I installed two long pins per edge, which seemed more than enough. Here's a demonstration of how cool these things are because they can be added to any existing shelf without disassembling it and the best part is that they are sturdy and invisible. Alright, let's go to Sarah's apartment and make the final assembly. It fits perfectly in the available space. I think the shallow drawer is a great addition so she can store her laptop or other illustration materials that her cat could damage. 
I'm not installing the drawer front just yet because we still need to decide on the drawer pull design, so I will include that in the next episode along with the walnut desktop. We started doing some inspiration research on Pinterest and I guess this cute little guy enjoyed our conversation the most. Sara just published a small book with illustrations about her cat, so I will leave her website and Instagram in the description for you to check out and say hi. It turned out pretty cool. I can't wait to continue working on the tabletop once the holidays are over. Hey, just before you go, this video has a Christmas scavenger hunt. This year I wanted to thank all of you for your support in a unique and fun way. So along the video are six fan favorite cameos and I have special gifts for the first three people to discover them all. Go back and rewatch the video to find them and check the description to know the rules. Happy holidays everyone and good luck!